Hi, welcome to Clack Chat. Today, the class is on how to write the notes on similar cases. Today, the case is SR Mumbai versus Union of India. In the last class, already I explained you about how to write the notes on case one on the Bharati versus uh, that is the state of Kerala. These familiar cases are very 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 important to CLAT students as well as the civil service aspirants and also to the aspirants of AOR examination because for the AOR examination one paper exclusively one paper is on these leading cases leading cases so actually in the last class I explained you about how to write short note as well as how to write the notes in detail on the familiar cases by taking case one and the Bharati as an example. But after that class, I received a number of mails from the civil service aspirants as well as the uh, aspirants of the AOR examination and they requested me to provide the notes on some more cases. So, Today, I am going to take this class on how to write the notes on SR Bombay versus Union of India. As I told you, as I told you in the last class, when you are going to write a notes on a familiar case, you have to remember five points or five <coughs> topics in that case those are first one is brief facts of the case this is very much important you have to uh, means write as a side heading when you are going to write the notes that are brief facts of the case what are the facts you have to identify and you have to write the second one is that issues what are the issues in that case means why the petitioner or the appellant moved to that court <coughs> what they are seeking what the relief they are seeking from the court that is very much important so second one is issues third one is arguments of the petitioner or appellant fourth one is arguments of the respondent and the last and fifth one is judgment so while you are going to write a notes on the familiar cases like either the case one on the Bharati case or the SR Bombay case whatever it may be you have to focus on all these five aspects which are very 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 important to you if you want to write the notes in detail, you can explain each and every point that is different. That will be depends on the number of marks given to that question as well as the time you have to write in detail. But if you want to write the notes on a familiar case, you have to concentrate on these five points. Now I am coming to this SR Bombay's case. See, the case is SR Bombay versus Union of India. First, to write the notes, you have to focus on the brief facts of the case. What are the brief facts in this case? Means SR Bombay versus Union of India. What are the parties means? Already it is there in the cause title that is SR Bombay versus Union of India means here SR Bombay is either the petitioner or the appellant and Union of India is the respondent. So here what are the brief facts of the case means SR Bombay was the chief minister of Karnataka at that time. Chief Minister of Karnataka at that time. I feel it is in the year 1988. It is in the year 1988. So, his government was dismissed by the President of India 
by imposing president rule under article 356 based on the recommendation of the the then governor of the state of Karnataka. So his government was dismissed and the proclamation was declared in the state of Karnataka. So the chief minister of the state, the chief minister of the state challenged the action of the governor, challenged the action of the governor in the High Court of Karnataka by way of a writ petition. By way of a writ petition. But Honorable High Court of Karnataka was dismissed that writ petition. Then the Chief Minister of that state means Karnataka named SR Bombay moved to Supreme Court moved to Supreme Court to challenge the action of the governor as well as the judgment passed by the Honorable High Court of Karnataka by way of SLP. By way of SLP. These are the facts of the case. These are the facts of the case. Now, I am coming to issues. What are the issues in this case? You see, here issues are there are two issues whether the president can declare the proclamation under article 356 at any circumstance without considering the facts and ground as a choice as a choice that is the first issue and the second issue is that whether the proclamation is subject to a judicial review or not. These are the issues. These are the two issues in this case. I will repeat you once again at the end of this class. What are the brief facts? What are the issues? And what are the arguments of the petitioner? And what are the arguments of the respondent? And what is the judgment? So you don't worry. And now the third one is arguments of the petitioner. But here, instead of using the name petitioner, we have to mention as appellant because SR Bombay did not approach the Supreme Court directly. He challenged the judgment passed by the Honorable High Court of Karnataka by way of SLP. Hence, we have to mention SR Bombay as appellant petitioner appellant petitioner so the arguments of the petitioner are we know that about the 42nd amendment of our constitution of india according to the means in the 42nd amendment of the constitution of india two words are added in our constitution those are socialist and secular Two words, very important words, those are socialist and secular. These two words are added in our constitution by the 42nd amendment of the constitution. In the case of Ananda Bharati, that is the 24th constitutional amendment. 24th constitutional amendment. But here, in the case of SR Bombay versus Union of India, the issue is related to 42nd amendment of the constitution. 24, 42nd. You remember. So, as well as here, the arguments of the petitioner is that once the words, those are socialist and secular are added in our constitution by the amendment named 42nd amendment of the constitution is there any validity to the concept of secularism or not because secular, secularism is very important in the democratic countries like india so if there is importance to the 42nd amendment and the words added in the constitution 
in the 42nd amendment those are socialist and secular then can the president declare the proclamation under article 356 without considering the circumstances and the grounds that is the argument of the petitioner the arguments of the respondent that is the fourth one the arguments of the respondent means union of india is that article 3561 does empower the president to dismiss legislative assembly of any state so that is the power of the president granted by the constitution of india so there shall not be any judicial review on it these are the arguments of the respondent means union of india upon hearing both sides arguments supreme court ruled that the fifth one judgment supreme court ruled that power of president to dismiss a state government is not absolute power of president to dismiss a state government is not absolute the president can declare the proclamation and can impose the president rule under article 356 there is no question on it but to utilize his powers he must get the approval from the both houses of the parliament till then he cannot utilize his power after declaration of the proclamation as well as the third one is means point number 3 in the judgment if the proclamation does not get the approval by the both the houses of the parliament both the houses of the parliament it will be lapsed in 2 months and the government which was dismissed will come into the power again however the proclamation is subject to judicial review judicial review these are the four points in the judgment means these are the points ruled by the supreme court in the case of sr bombay versus union of india so once again i repeat all this how to write the notes you just remember the brief facts of the case sr bombay versus union of india are first one sr bombay was the then chief minister of state of karnataka and his government was dismissed by the president of india and the proclamation was imposed under article 356 based on the recommendation of the governor of the state but the action of the governor is not according to the law hence the Dijan, Chief Minister of the Karnataka, named Yes Sir Bombay, challenged the action of the Governor in the High Court by way of writ petition, but it was dismissed. Hence, Yes Sir Bombay moved to the Supreme Court to challenge the action of the Governor as well as the judgment passed by the Honorable High Court of Karnataka by way of SLP. These are the facts of the case. known as sr bombay versus union of india now issues i am coming to the issue there are two issues first one issue number 1 whether the president has power to declare the proclamation and the article 356 at any circumstances or however he like without following due process of law he the issue number 1 and second issue is whether the proclamation is subject to the judicial review or not that is issue number 
the arguments of the petitioner are appellant are that due to the words socialist and secular are added in our constitution by the 42nd constitutional amendment by the 42nd constitutional amendment hence there must be some importance to the concept of secularism in the countries means in the democratic countries like india however there shall be a judicial review for the proclamation also means proclamation is subject to a judicial review these are the arguments of the petitioner or appellant the arguments of the respondent that is the fourth one are that article 3561 empower president to dismiss legislative assembly of the any state however due to it is the power granted to the president of india by the constitution of india there so there shall not be any judicial review upon hearing both sides arguments supreme court passed the judgment and the important points in the judgment are first one president means here you have to observe power of president point number 1 is power of president to dismiss a state government is not absolute that is point number 1 the points in the judgment are power of president to dismiss a state government is not absolute point number 2 the president can declare the proclamation under article 356 but after declaring the proclamation he must get the approval of the both the houses of the parliament till then he cannot utilize his powers that is point number 2 and point number 3 is if the proclamation does not get the approval by the both the houses of the parliament then the proclamation will be lapsed after 2 months and the government which was dismissed will be come into the power again and the last point means fourth point is that proclamation is subject to judicial review this is the notes on sr bombay versus union of india okay i think you understand so i will <coughs> explain you about how to write the notes on some other case in the next class till then bye